currency turmoil in the world. That is a disaster, the likes of which we have not seen often in world history. April. Right now, if and when we have a big bear market, for whatever reason, and it has to be horrendous, the debt everywhere is staggering, staggering. Jim, good morning to you. How are you? I'm fine. I can't quite hear you a little louder or into the mic or something, or maybe it's just because I'm a deaf old man or something. I don't know. <laughs> Is that a little bit better? That's a little bit better. Still not perfect, but I can hear you said. Is that a little bit better? And I said <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's good to see you. And happy birthday to you. I'm surprising you, but happy belated birthday to you. Thank you. I usually don't pay too much attention to birthdays. It's never that important to me. But I then married a woman who loves, who loves birthdays. If yeah. she your birthday, she would love your birthday. And so don't tell her. I don't tell her. Well, they're the better of us, aren't they? So... Um, I wanted to talk about, there's so much going on in the world. It's almost overwhelming. It's very complex too. Yet it seems to me there's a few common three, uh, themes. One of the biggest common themes that I can think of right now that is happening is that there's a lot of printing going on in the world. What is uh, your view on all the printing that's going on, both in the U.S. now in Ch and in China? What's going on and what's your 30,000 view but of the economy? And what is your the noun you use? A lot of money? A lot of what? Printing. Money printing. Oh, printing. Oh, my God. You've been observing, haven't you? Oh, my gosh, yes. Everybody has learned. Well, as you know, the world has had a very long, in fact, in the U.S., the longest prosperity without a problem in American history. And the politicians like that. They think it's fun. They think they'll get them elected. They don't particularly care about you and me. They care about getting elected. That's, that's their reason for going to work every day. So... They have learned to print money. It's not just the U.S. Many countries have been doing it. I mean, Japanese, oh my gosh, it's unbelievable how much they have been printing. But everybody's been doing it. And history shows, Andy, history shows me that that eventually leads to problems. Uh, great. It's great while it's happening. But in the end, somebody has to pay the price. And you know what, Andy? You and I are going to pay the price and a lot of other innocent people. Yep. Not today. Don't worry. Not today. Then when, if it's not today, you don't have to answer that. Um, go ahead. No, I do want to say one thing in that regard. It's been the longest in American history without a big problem. So I don't know, but I know it's getting closer. It's, you know, it's getting closer. So really, that really begs the question to me, because you had the Fed just cut rates recently, and yet the stock market was at at or near all-time highs. You had China, you had the ECU, or the ECB, if you would. They all cut rates. You had the Bank of Japan. They're all cutting rates. Is Do you see it? Markets correcting, especially the U.S. market correcting with all of this money printing? Well, at the moment, everybody looks out to wonder is having a very good time. There's money, lots of free money everywhere. So everybody thinks it is, and well, it is good. It's good for the moment. It's good for most people for the moment. But I repeat that history always shows that a lot of free money leads to problems. I don't know when. We don't have wild inflation yet. The history shows it will come again. And when it comes, it has to be very bad because 
this is the longest in American history. Now, Washington says, don't worry, solved all the problems. We'll never have problems again. The Secretary of the Trade, Yellen said, don't worry, you got it under control. She's got two fancy Ivy League degrees. Oh, maybe. Well, but Andy, well, maybe I don't, maybe it is this time, but it never has been different. And this has always led to problems. I don't know when. We should watch your show to find out when. So really my next question is, as I'm sure you're a well, very well aware of, um, gold and silver have been on quite a move upward. Um, where do you think this goes or where is, where do you think, uh, this, what do you think this is telling us? Well, what the world is telling me, <laughs> things are wonderful right now, but this always leads to problems to repeat myself. And yes, I mean, I, I, I wish all we had to do was just say hooray and spend our money as fast as but, and maybe it's different this time, Andy. Maybe it's finally different. Maybe they finally got it right. But that's not the way I'm investing. That's the way, not the way I'm living my life. I know, yes, I could, I'm not selling short, by the way. I'm not selling short yet because I don't see enough wild hysteria in the markets yet to make me sell short but I'm certainly not buying. Right. Unless you or, give me a hot tip. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll a hot tip from you. <laughs> I have several. No. Um, so what is, where do you see value in a world that is printing? Um, do you see that possibly perhaps still in China and China just ripped higher just okay. recently? Is there value there? Um, do you, do you see, um, yeah, where do you see value in different other places in Asia? Um, well, as you know, the Chinese market was one of the few markets that was down in recent days, weeks, everything else was making new highs, uh, nearly everything else. So then China said, we're going to get in on the game too. So I own Chinese shares that I've owned for a while. I haven't bought anything new because I'm too lazy to find something. But no, I guess I, I'm not selling my Chinese shares. I'm quite happy owning these Chinese shares. They have been depressed. And if China's going to get in the game, I guess I'll make a little money, mm. which I don't mind. Yeah. Talk to me about the BRICS. As you're aware that the BRICS just had a... Uh, a big meeting and they were discussing getting away. Really, it seems to me that they were, they were discussing a lot of things, but one of the topics was how to de-dollarize. Do you think that's feasible? Do you think the BRICS countries will be doing that in the future? And do you think the dollar supremacy as the world currency is in jeopardy? Well, this is uh, 2024. In 1924, Britain was the richest, most powerful country in the world. Pound sterling was, that was all there was in 1924. As you well know, I'm sure, 50 years later, Britain was bankrupt. Literally had bailed out by the IMF. Now, that went from number one with no competitor to bankrupt with the IMF paying their bills. Can that happen? Well, it has happened before. Right next to Britain to many other countries. So, and the, I, I get the American dead. And I mean, maybe I just cannot add, but I do not see any way that my children cannot have huge problems in their lifetime because of the U.S. dollar, problems with the U.S. dollars. I remember, you know, 50 years ago, there were gigantic problems in the world with the British pound. Everybody was always trying to figure out how do we save Britain? How do we save the pound? They were vision went bankrupt. Margaret Thatcher came along 
and supposedly celebrating. He was elected in 1979. That was the same year that the North Sea oil started flowing into Britain. So you give me the largest oil field in the world, Andy, and I'll show you a very, very good time. And that's what Margaret Thatcher did. So I don't know who what's going to save the U.S. We have a lot of oil, but not that much. Not as not comparative to what happened to Britain at that day in those days. And I mean, Washington keeps saying, "Don't worry," but I keep adding and subtracting, and it makes me worried. Right? They can't add and subtract, and they probably cannot. Knowing who we keep electing. Yeah. Let's talk about oil a little bit. Oil is one of the few sectors that hasn't really um, ripped, if you would, this year in the energy sector. What's your outlook on energy? And is that a sector that you'd be interested in? Well, I know known reserves of oil continue to decline all over the world known reserves. Maybe there's a lot more that we haven't found yet. I hope there is. I certainly hope so. Um, but we are going to have a problem unless something changes dramatically because the reserves are going down and most of the world continues to use more energy. I mean, so many countries are getting more and more prosperous every day. And when you get prosperous, you use more energy. So, and yeah, I don't see any way that we cannot, back to my children, I can, that my children cannot go to extremely difficult times because of what's happening in the world. When, and I don't know when the next recession is going to come. I know it's going to come, but when it's going to come, it's going to be horrendous. The debt everywhere is skyrocketing. Oil reserves are going down. Everything. I can problems in many areas. And we haven't started talking about war yet. You know, unfortunately, history shows that mankind always has some wars. Be worried. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about war here, especially with the tensions with uh, China and perhaps Taiwan. I know there's a lot of flexing there. Do you think that's going to be resolved peacefully there? Or do you see some sort of aggression from China um, in regards to Taiwan? Well, the way I sit and read things, China has been remarkably restrained. Thank goodness. That doesn't mean right. they will continue to be restrained. So far, they're restrained. But if I were China, and I'm not, and I don't know them, but if I were China, I would. Look at the map. You can see it. China's going to own Taiwan again someday. I don't know when someday is, but, but if I were John, it has to be ours again. And it, are we going to have a gigantic war over Taiwan? So far, they've been restrained. I hope they continue. It's Washington keeps worrying me. Washington keeps trying to hit them in the eye. You know, they keep sending politicians to Taiwan to scream and yell, which I don't know what America gets out of that, except maybe some politicians on TV. I just hope that Washington continues to be restrained and that Beijing continues to be restrained. I don't know why anybody needs to have a giant war over Taiwan. Maybe you do, but I know how to figure it out. I can't figure that out. Talk to me about what you know of the Chinese gold buying. They seem to be the central banks and really all of the central banks across the world have been aggressively buying gold. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I hope they keep buying my own gold. I hope it's silver too. There was cheaper on it. They have place. Russia they has them both. Yeah. If I were buying one today, I would buy silver. Not because I'm talking to you, but no, I plan to sell my gold or my silver. I hope my children have it someday. History is very clear that 
when there's a disaster, you want to have some gold in the closet. You want to have some silver under the bed. So I'm, I'm an old peasant. I got some gold and silver in the closet and under the bed. And I hope I'm smart enough to get some more. Yeah. Well, you're does very welcome. Does the world need or does it need it? But has the world always used gold and silver? Yes. You remember Jesus Christ? He was sold for 30 pieces of silver. And, you know, silver was the, the store of value in that part of the world in those days. It still is for that matter. So gold and silver have always been useful and valuable. I also. Yeah. Do you like the gold and silver equities here or um, just physical? Well, if you're smart and energetic, that is a huge, wonderful way to make a lot of money. If you buy a company that's got a silver mine in Berlin, oh my gosh, you're going to be rich for gold mines in Sydney or something. Of course. But I mean, I guess I'm too lazy or not smart enough or whatever, but I have the real stuff. You know, physical. Got it. Um, go back a little bit more to uh, war. And unfortunately, that's just a topic that's hard to talk about, but I do want to address this. Um, you have the war in the Middle East, if you would. It seems to be escalating. I don't want to say war. It's conflict in the Middle East that's escalating. Why isn't that somebody, it seems like, with common sense would de-escalate whether it's the war in the Middle East or the war with Ukraine and Russia. I just don't understand why there's not de-escalation. There's continual escalation. And you have just made the dilemma that the world has faced for centuries. Most of these wars start and then a few months, and when they start, everybody says, ah, it'll be over by Christmas. We'll show those bastards. We'll be finished by Christmas. And then, of course, six months later, everybody says, how do we get into this war? What a stupid war. How do we get out of this war? And that's the problem. It's very, very difficult to get out of these things. And I am not going to defend what's happening in the Middle East or anywhere, but I know it's happened frequently throughout history. And everybody wants out once they realize what they're into. Because it's, none of them can ever be rationally explained. Even who win wars don't win. Cause gigantic amounts of money and lives and destruction and everything else. Oh my gosh. No, I cannot defend what's happening in either of the places you mentioned or any place else that might be. You know, if something happens in Taiwan, I and many people are going to say, what? Who cares? What are we doing? You know how much it would cost America, even if we win in Taiwan? What do we get out of that? I hope somebody wises up. Yeah, me too. Um, it really leads me back to uh, really the question of where do you see this ending? I should say, maybe ask the question like this, in 10 to 15 years time, and you and I are talking, having a coffee, what does the world look like in 10 to 15 years time? Is there still massive amounts of money printing? Is it countries, do you think, sick and tired of war and now there's a peace? Is there gold at 4000 or 5000 or $10,000 an ounce and oil significantly higher because of this? What, what does the world look like in 10 to 15 years in your mind? Well, unfortunately, I think I know that most central governments, most central banks in the world know that if they print money, they will look good for a while. So I see national debts everywhere, skyrocketing everywhere. And the only solution that they see to that is to print much more money, increase the debts, 
So I see a world, it's happened before, and it, where currencies are debased, the currencies lose their value, people are trying to figure out ways to survive, and we haven't even gotten to a war yet, because often, when going bad somewhere, the politicians blame the foreigners. Whoever the foreigners are, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they always say, not us. We're good, solid human beings. It's those few horrible foreigners that are causing the problem. <laughs> it's always happened that way, and I suspect they will again. It doesn't matter who the foreigners are. They find some foreigners. They always find some foreigners. So uh, I see well, between now and then, a lot more turmoil, a lot more currency debasement, disasters in currencies, debt, bankruptcies, and usually periods like that have some war. Am I suggesting any of this is good? No. <laughs> I've read enough. No, it's horrible. It's stupid. It's foolish. Is it going to happen? It always has. With, uh, that leads me into, I really, this would be my last question is, is there one currency that you would like and not including gold and silver? You already have that, but would it still be the U S dollars again? Would that be it? Or is there another currency that you would like to have as opposed to the dollar? Oh, Andy, what a brilliant question. And it's a question I don't have an answer. Yes, I own a lot of U.S. dollars right now. And I, you'll probably say, well, why? And I own U.S. dollars because when things go wrong, people look for what they think is a safe haven. At the moment, the world thinks the U.S. dollars is a safe haven. It's not, but they think it is, so it, it will be for a while. Now, I own a lot of them. And your question is, what comes next to compete with the dollar? And Andy, I don't have an answer. I hope you do. But I look for it every day. And so far, I've not found it. In theory, it could be the Chinese currency. But the Chinese currency is not convertible. So you cannot have a world currency that's not even convertible. So I don't see one out there. I don't see the euro pulling at all. I don't see anybody. If you know what's coming next, please do not announce it. Please send me a private email because I'm looking every day and I don't see anybody on the horizon. That, And to repeat, if China went convertible today, say, because it'll take a while, nothing can happen that quickly in people's minds. So I don't know what it is. And I assure you, every day I try to figure it out and have not figured out what the next competitor to the dollar will. Yeah, I I go back and forth with that question because that is the dilemma. I just don't see somebody replacing it, especially in a time of turmoil right now. I just, and I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying that, but I just don't right now. Well, I don't see anybody even competing with the dollar, much less repressing it. Right. Um, I just like to find a competitor, a sound competitor. And I don't know one. I don't see one on the horizon. <laughs> As I say, even if China became convertible suddenly, that's not going to solve the problem fast enough. The world doesn't work that way. And not, certainly not the euro. I mean, we don't have to go down the list of the currencies out there. But I don't see yet what will be the competitor to the dollar. If you figure it out, send me an email. I'll send you an email for sure. Any uh, final thoughts you have? I've spoken to you, you, I want to say, four times in the past year. Any final thoughts that you would have to all of our listeners and viewers going into the new year of what they should be aware of or what, um, what you have your radar or what you're looking out for? 
Well, we just discussed it. What I'm mainly looking for is where is the safe haven? Is there a safe haven? Yes, I own gold. Yes, I own silver. But even if the world suddenly goes to some kind of gold or silver standard, it'll take a long time. It won't happen quickly. And in the meantime, there'll be chaos and confusion and disaster. So my worry is where is it? What is it? Who is it? And I hope Andy knows. I hope Andy will figure it out and Andy will tell all of us because it is going to be a huge problem. And if there is major currency turmoil in the world, that is a disaster the likes of which we have not seen often in world history. April. Right now, if and when we have a big bear market, for whatever reason, and it has to be horrendous, the debt everywhere is staggering, staggering. I mean, you look at Tokyo, it's unbelievable how much debt they're building up every day. The Bank of Japan goes to work and gets more debt. Astonish. They're good Japanese bureaucrats. They do it this and I mean, as I look around, I don't see any place that's a safe haven. I own gold, I own silver, but if and when turmoil comes, it's going to be hard, be hard for us to go down to the grocery store with my silver and say, I need a loaf of bread. You know, it's going to be very difficult everywhere. So. What I'm afraid of is the next bear market is going to be very bad because the debt in the U.S. and elsewhere, the world has never seen anything like this. And it keeps getting worse every day. It's not as though there's somebody saying, oh, let's, we got to do something. Every day they say, we got to borrow more money. We got to print more money. So, if and when the crisis comes and we're all forced to deal with a problem, that's called a horrible bear market. When the world is forced, when the market forces us all to deal with problems, that's a horrible bear market. Always has. Maybe on that, we should uh, stock up on a lot of canned goods, huh? Well, I leave it to everybody to figure out their own way to face this problem, but I don't see any way to avoid the problem coming. Uh, you and your listeners and everybody, we're going to have to deal with it because it's not just the U.S. Everywhere the debt gets higher and, you know, in, 19, in 2008, China bailed us all out. Yeah. China didn't have much debt, but now China's got huge debts. I don't know who's going to bail us out this time. Well, three of them have debt, but everybody else does. And North Korea is not going to bail us out. So, I mean, as I look around, I don't see anybody who doesn't have huge debts now. We have. Well, Jim, I think we'll end on that. I want to thank you again. This, I believe, is the fourth time I had you on this year. You're incredibly gracious to me with your time. And uh, a hero in many ways, you inspired me in a, on, on a journey a long time ago. So I want to thank you and happy birthday. Thank you very much. And Andy, if you figure out the solution, send, us, send me an email. Send everybody an email. Okay. I'll send I'll send you an email first, and then my mother, my dear mother, an email second. <laughs> hooray, hooray, hooray. I look forward to it. All right. I hope Take we all care. survive. I hope we all survive. Thank Me you, too. Andy. Well done. Thank well you. Well done.